Welcome to Take It From Us, a podcast about the adventure of relationships. This show is all about exploring the fun and exciting heart of relationships, while always keeping it 100% authentic. So, take it from us, the expert non-experts. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Take It From Us. My name is Mingo. My name is Lucy. (laughs) And uh, we're just excited to be with you guys. Um, This is a podcast um, about relationship, relationship goals, all that good stuff. But before we get there, um, we think that it's super important for you just to know who we are as people. You know, I don't like to take advice from anyone who I don't know. And so uh, so we just want to kind of tell you a little bit about us, a little bit about our story. That way we can connect on a personal level. Um, and then you kind of know where we're coming from, you know, with some of the things we're going to be talking about. But um, I'm going to let Lucy go first and just kind of tell you a little bit of our backstory, um, a little bit about us, our relationship, all that good stuff. Well, first of all, we're fun. Extremely. All, yeah, I like to think we're the funnest people we know. But yeah, there's no one, there's no one better. There's nobody more fun than we are. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. We go to bed by nine, so <laughs> living it up. Okay. So we have been married for nine years. Yep. Um, it's been the greatest and most challenging and growing and all the things nine years we've ever experienced individually, I would yes. say. Um, I grew up in a very like I was very sheltered as a child Um, my parents were both married they were married Um, they did end up separating for a period you know as I got older and then you know they're back together and all of that and that really cool story but um, so I really kind of had this I guess um, ideal picture of relationships you know this dream maybe maybe I had a non-realistic perception Right, of um, what relationships you thought were. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, so I kind of carried that with me for always. Um, my family, we were always really, like, open in conversation. Yeah. Um, maybe a bit too open sometimes. I kind of overstepped quite a bit as I got older, but um, we were very open. I was allowed to say, I was allowed to say what I needed to say. Right. If that makes sense. That's good. Um, so I kind of always carried that into other relationships Um, and I had to learn, well, I experienced it and I didn't actually learn the lesson early on, but I I recognize now that, you know, if you don't have an established relationship, that openness and and communication and responses isn't always easily accepted. Right. So I would definitely come off sometimes as a lot to handle. Um, you know, just cause I was expecting us all to just, you know, we're all family, we're going to get past it and not everybody grew up that way. So right. not everybody knows how to receive things that way. And so that's kind of how I um, perceived relationships. And I I know that I brought a lot of that into even our own marriage, our dating and even our marriage. But um, so on that hand, we've always had really open communication. Yeah. Um, so I would say that's definitely a strength that I brought in. Yeah, that's good. Um, and so we met, um, I went to... Um, college uh, up in the dallas fort worth area and uh you know i wanted to get connected um and so i found a a local church there and um lucy was there and we met we started talking we actually hated each other when we first met each other we despised each other yeah we just were not not always very pretty no it was not um but you know a lot of times that kind of friction you know usually draws you to one another um, and so then we started dating. Um, I was 19, 20 ish. Um, Lucy was 18. And, uh, and so we started dating and, uh, you know, we, we, we started dating when I was in college, but then at two years into college, um, I got a job offer. Um, so I went and started doing that job, um, all the while, you know, continuing my education online. But what that meant was I was going to have to leave the city that I was in, which was like 30 minutes away from Lucy and move four hours away from Lucy. Yeah. So it definitely brought in that long distance element. 
still was like four hours, but you know, when you're a dramatic person, four hours can feel like the world. So yeah, uh, it definitely brought its own set of challenges. A dramatic person such as Lucy. Yeah. Well, yeah. That I feel, I felt <laughs> like that was just, <laughs> you felt like that was just understood. Yeah. So, uh, so, you know, so, um, 2018 year old, um, you know, navigating that long distance relationship, you know, knowing pretty early on, at least on my end, that, um, you know, I wanted to take this relationship seriously. Um, you know, I, I had already had aspirations of marriage, you know, that type of thing. And, you know, so we dated for two years long distance. Yeah. Yeah. So it was two years that we dated long distance. Um, and, you know, all the while, you know, navigating that whole thing. Obviously, probably not the best. Yeah. But there were, there were some. Well, I mean, you think also, I mean, between that whole you know, that 18 to 20, 21, that, that period, you know, you're out of high school, you're coming into college or you're in college. It's, you're just really learning what it means like, you know, to be an adult right. without, right. without your parents. And so it can already feel like really challenging and, you know, and especially when you're learning yourself and then you throw somebody else in the mix yeah, who's learning sure. themselves. Now we're for both sure. learning ourselves and learning each other. Right. It could just be, it can be messy. Yeah. And so, <laughs> so like, even to that point, like growing up for me, um, you know, we were uh, experienced kind of what, kind of what Lucy had said, but a little earlier, Lucy's, you know, parents kind of, uh, separated towards, I think you were actually, I, we were already together. So yeah, I was me like, and Lucy were together already. When I, I was either already, no, I had to have been already 19. Yeah. You yeah. were 19. Um, and, and so that happened with her Mine happened a lot earlier for me um i was nine ten years old um and my parents separated as well um and so that was one of the most difficult you know parts like times for me as a kid you know navigating that already struggling you know through just being a boy you know and then that's when you know all your hormones change and then your parents split up and you know so you're having to navigate all this crazy emotion and whatnot um and so in that time i very much became a um uh i was quick to attach myself to people because i was always afraid they were going to sep you know that we were going to separate but at the same time i was also able to attach but in like a cold way if that makes sense yeah, keeping so, your guard up yeah so i attached to people but i was very guarded in that um and so you know uh for me i was very much that you know i want to woo women i want them to love me and like me but ultimately just so um i could um you know use them in whatever way possible and so, you know, even yeah. bringing that into the marriage, you know, was something that we had to even kind of navigate yeah. and all of that, you know. And I thought that was that was something that was uh, that was pretty like prominent. Well, you know? and then you know, for me, bringing in that, hey, we're, let's talk about all the things in the world, right? Even if it's the meanest thing I could think of to ever say to you, let's just say it. But it's fine. We're going to be fine after. <laughs> right. That's just not. That's not reality, especially right. when you're talking to somebody who who has learned to live with this guard up and has learned how to right. um, commit in ways, commit in words. Let's say it that way. Um, on the outside, you're committed, but on the inside, you carried this this invisible guard that nobody right. knew about. Yeah, absolutely. And then it turns into this. Well, I'm going to I'm going to hurt you before you can hurt me. Right. Which is another thing I care, you know, that defense. Right. And that's something different, you know, like this defense coping mechanism, whatever. But right. um, but even still not recognizing those things early on yeah. was, I mean, it was something we definitely had to grow through. And right. luckily we had people in our lives who were really stout people. And, and they were authentic <laughs> people. They were authentic people. Didn't really play around with um, it. And we could be, we didn't have to play, like we didn't have to play around with our words. I think yeah. that's one of the things that was and is still important to me is that listen let's just say it let's just rip the band-aid off yeah get through it and then you know what i'm saying yeah, i mean obviously sure. there's ways that you can do it but i think that it can be really complicated because nobody's really saying anything right and i think a lot of times what happens in relationships is that let's not say anything because that's going to be the best thing for us 
you know, because the minute I say something, either you're going to take it wrong. No, 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 no. I think the best thing is just to say what needs to be said. And then obviously in a, in a not maybe sometimes yeah, so brash not an way, attacking but way. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know what I mean? So, so yeah. So, you know, but so we brought these kind of things into our marriage, other things that we had to kind of navigate. And I remember even having to, so I'm, I'm not white. Uh, I am. Uh, what? Yeah, I know. Um, I am Hispanic. So if you're just listening, I'm brown. Um, and, uh, you know, Lucy's Caucasian. She's white. And if you're watching, then you can see me glowing. In yeah. Light, so. <laughs> Everybody exactly. brought sunglasses to the table. <laughs> hopefully uh no but uh but you know um that was another thing that we brought into it and i remember you know talking with my with my dad um even as you know i started to tell him you know that this relationship was becoming more serious you know that type of thing um you know he said mingo you just have to be aware that not everybody is going to agree with your marriage um and i just didn't that just never clicked with me right it was just never like a okay, well, that's fine. They're going to get over it or whatever. Um, but then, you know, recognizing that not everyone did, you know, you're always going to have, you know, that group of people that um, see interracial relationships. And that was another thing is people weren't considering our relationship an interracial relationship because I wasn't African-American or whatever. Well, no, it's still interracial because it's yeah we don't have the it same background so, yeah Challenges. so um but even bringing that in and even understanding the cultural differences between lucy's family and my family um and i think that was huge yeah night and day difference yeah yeah so and, I, and I, 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 I don't even think it even had to do with maybe it did it probably race played some you know into it but it's also just the fact that we were two totally different families yeah and everybody kind of brought their own thing to the table right so yeah i i remember um well, and I can even see it, you know, in the way that, um, you know, we present ourselves, you know, you're very, uh, you, you just really, you know, you have kind of a sternness sometimes. And whereas I'm just like, Hey, let's just, let's just have fun. Let's just, right. you know, and sometimes, sometimes that causes me to cross a line and, you know, cause I, uh, as far as when it comes to respect, if, right. if that makes sense. Yeah. So sometimes I cannot be as aware of that. Um, again, because of my family dynamic, because of the way, you know, the way that we were raised, the way things happen, right. um, you know, so it just, it just came across differently. Whereas I was like, oh my gosh, why is your dad so strict? <laughs> it had nothing to do with that. Right. It was, it was very much more of that culture of, of respect and honor. It was right. not a, um, you know, oh my gosh, this is, you know, tyrannical, but you know what I'm saying? Does it yeah, make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So even recognizing the, the, they may not seem like a big deal, but when you've seen that and I haven't, and now we're trying to bring that together, when we, let's say, you know, when we started arguing or when we started fighting, you could definitely see that some of those things would come out. Right. And so even recognizing the difference and all that. Yeah. And I think that that's huge because I think one of the biggest, I think one of the biggest realizations and the biggest kind of moments, I think for us was to realize it's okay that we're different. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and it's like, good that we're different. Yeah, and recognizing that that was okay. I think you know, for the longest time, you kind of had that notion, you had that idea that you know we've got to we've got to be the same people, we've got to act the same, we've got and and I yeah. you know as parents, I get it, you've got to be on the same front, things like that. But the reality of it is, she is a totally different person than I am, and so for me to try to um, say, hey, you need to be different. That's just not fair to you. Well, and I think also it diminishes who we are as individuals. Right. So for me, again, I, you know, I, I can be, I can become a perfectionist really quick. Like right. I can really cross that line real quick. So when it comes to leading people or when it comes to expanding into other relationships, that that's a really, that can be a, that, that can be a, a button yeah, and absolutely. I can cross that line really quick with people. Whereas you are very gracious in your approach to people. And so, um, but to that, to that fact, you can also be overly gracious. Right. To gracious people. To so fault. recognizing yeah. that, you know, as a team, which is really the way we operate. Yeah. And so recognizing even with our kids, 
that, yeah, you can, you can be too gracious and which becomes enabling and I can be too hard, which becomes tyrannical. tyrannical. So, yeah. so recognizing that we both bring that to the table. Um, and when we, when we choose to diminish those things in each other, then really ultimately, not only do we suffer, but our kids suffer Yeah, absolutely. or, or our other relationships suffer yeah. and then it gets weird and awkward and gross. So, right. um, I think that, yeah, learning to celebrate the differences, but at the same time, we're also both choosing to grow in those things. That's right. Uh, and, so I and I think that's, think that's a huge, yeah, that's I think huge. that's an important thing to, um, to remember. Yeah, for sure. I, I totally agree with that. So I also remember like even in our early in our marriage, um, you know, I had, um, I was a full-time student. So again, I came back my sophomore year. Um, we got married. It took me three years after to finish school. So then I, we got married two years after I came back. Um, I was 22. She was 20. Um, we were babies. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so I was a full-time student. I had a full-time job and I was trying to be a full-time husband all at the same time. And I remember us trying to navigate that yeah. and how difficult that was for us because I was being pulled in all these different directions. And for me, you know, obviously I didn't do it the best. I didn't handle it the best. Um, but, uh, you know, knowing that Lucy loved me, knowing that I loved Lucy, you know, in that, in that season, you know, kind of was what carried us through, you know, that, that time that I was having, you know, being pulled in a million directions. Yeah. I remember, um, our six month mark was a rough time. <laughs> that was, a, that was a lot. I think that's when everything kind of, not that it came crashing down. That's, that's not a good word choice, but for lack of better words, I guess you would say that's when, that's when the honeymoon time ended. That's when we, that's when we started. I woke up that's when, when we started. Like, <laughs> you're still here. Like, aren't, Cause we're, we're long distance. So aren't you supposed to be going home? Yeah. 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 And yeah. so anyway, so and that's was, when, and that's when the, the leaving each other on a weekly basis became kind of the norm. Like I'm going to my mom's or, you know, well, I'm going home. Or, here's the thing. Here's the thing. And I don't know if I've ever told you this. I would say, I'm just going to just go to my parents' house then. <laughs> and I would text my parents. I'm like, I'm just going to come visit this weekend. And uh, my mom would be like, oh, why? Is everything okay? You know, I'm like, so at first, then I got smart. But at first I was like, no, Mingo's just being rude. He's just a <laughs> jerk. And uh, my mom said, I'm sorry, you're not welcome this weekend. And would not let me come home. Oh, uh, what a great mom. Then I got smart and started mom. saying, and then I got smart and saying, um, yeah, I just, you know, I just, you know, kind of need a change in scenery, you know, because yeah, I didn't yeah. want to, I couldn't lie to her, uh, but I just need a change in scenery. It was true because you were the worst scenery at the time. <laughs> so I needed to see something fresh. Um, That's and awesome. so uh, then she started picking up on it, but she would still fish. And then, right. you know, I'm really in the heat of the moment. I'm like, I'm done. I hate everybody. I'm quitting. <laughs> um, and then obviously cooler heads prevail. And oh, then, yeah. you know, I'd come Absolutely. to it and I'd say, sorry, mom, I'm not going to be able to make it this weekend. Yeah. yeah so yeah. she always knew, and, but it was And that. you always did a great job of just kind of calming down after those kind of yeah. big Well, remember at first I would just drive off and I would pretend <laughs> yeah. I was leaving and I would just drive and I was like, I would sit yeah. at the park like, oh, I'm going to go home. <laughs> How long until my petty point is proven? <laughs> so dumb. I remember one time I just got so mad at you that I was like, I'm not doing anything for you. And I took all of your clothes mid-wash out of the water. I was like, if you can't do what I asked you to do, I'm not doing anything for you. I took all of your clothes like mid-wash out of the washer and it was, there's water everywhere. Then oh, we the like immediately made up and then I was stuck not only rewashing the clothes because yeah, yeah, it was yeah, mid-cycle yeah. and yeah. I had to rewash my clothes. I had massive mess of water to oh, just water point. everywhere yeah so <laughs> it was all to prove her point ladies and so gentlemen. the pettiness is real <laughs> um so no, but it was but rough. i think that that goes to the reality i think of marriage so almost every single you know married couple couples and relationships all kind of have that story i remember even whenever we were dating you know that we that lucy broke up with me it was uh, mutual. It, it was, was over not text. mutual. Okay. No, it was Hold not. Hold on. We need to establish. Mutual. Listen, what we said was you texted me, said, okay, so we're breaking up then question mark. And I was like, okay, well, if he thinks we're breaking up, I'm going to prove my point. 
Yes, we're breaking up. See, so you, that was admittance okay. right there, ladies no, and gentlemen. It was, so okay. we have just now settled a oh, nine-year argument. Never. <laughs> Whatever. No, I'm just kidding. But I remember, you know, I st- I do remember that moment, though, um, you know, of that. And, and the recognition, though, of even in that moment, knowing that, that you know, you were always going to be the one that I knew that there was something great about you. I still believe that to this day. Um, that there's something great about you and in all of that even in the struggle and the balance and the you know trying to figure all that out and then not to mention adding kids into the equation we have three kids we have a seven well we're gonna have a seven a six and we'll, uh, a two-year-old so and you're welcome world they're like the most beautiful children that's right seen. um and so you know throwing kids even into that equation and we'll kind of talk about them later but you know, uh, throwing all of that and balancing that, you know, now, you know, with the full-time job, you know, now Lucy's in school and, you know, all the things that go in it, you know, we've kind of just, we've decided that we're in this together. And when we made that decision, you know, so many years ago, it kind of changed the game for us because it wasn't like a, um, really great friends of ours. Um, you know, he, he made this statement. He said, you know, in a marriage, it's not his role. It's not her role. He's not the disciplinarian. You're not the, the, the you know, nurturer. the nurturer. And it wasn't like, you know, he takes out the trash. You do the dishes. No, no, no. It's truly a team effort. It truly has to be you're in it together. Um, and when we made the decision to kind of operate like that, that it wasn't just your role. It wasn't just my role. It wasn't your job. It wasn't my job. It's our role and it's our job you know now i can't 100 percent attest to that i've been perfect in it but i do you know really do try i really do make an effort um you know like you see dishes well just do the dishes i remember just here recently you know staying up to like one o'clock just to help just to get things in order because i knew that it was weighing on her and so and she does the same for me you know um and so i think recognizing that relationship is all about team um, the minute you make it about you, you know, it's just, it's no, it becomes no fun anymore. Yeah. And I think ultimately it really, you're not really doing yourself any favors when you make it about you. And I'm, I'm not, I mean, even, even if let's move past marriage relationship, you know, if you are in friendships, you're working as a team. If that relationship is vital to you, if that's an important relationship for your life, then you're going to do whatever it takes to yeah. make it happen. You're going to do whatever it takes to make it work. Um, le- le- siblings, like my sister is my is really my. I mean, besides you, my best friend. Yeah. And so, so to try to, um, to not put any time and effort into that relationship, and to recognize it as, oh well, you know, if it gets hard, bye. You know, right. that's not that's not really a team. That's not right. how a team operates. Yeah. And so. If you really look at it, when times get hard, when things um, start to weigh on you, um, when it comes down to it, you can have you or you can have your teams with you. Yeah. And teams are much stronger than just one person. Yeah. And I'll never forget, you know, there's been many times, you know, again, we'll go into it later, but, um, you know, with our kids, you know, like Alexander, if he's had to go to the hospital a few times, you know, we've had people who have, um, they've offered to bring us food they've offered to go get clothes for us you know and it wasn't a close drive they've offered like gone out of their way you know we have some of our best friends don't even live near us and they've texted us and called us and at least checked in right and so you know when you're in those moments it helps to have somebody that you can just vent to yeah i can't even tell you how many times i've texted somebody and said hey i'm really having a hard time with this and just laid it all out right um and people will do the same for me and so so when you recognize that a relationship is not I focused, it's we focused. Yeah. Um, you know, like when we got married, we decided quitting is not an option. Yeah. Um, and so that's how we view relationships. Yeah. Quitting is not an option. Um, now there's differences in like friendships and acquaintances, you know, however you want to look at the relationship, you know, if it's a, fr- if it's a relationship that's important to your life, <sighs> then it's a team. It's not about you anymore. Right. It's about us. Right. Right. So you're and either that, in it together or you're not. Yeah. And I think that's, that's been, that's again, all of those have been true keys for us. And, you know, I mean, we've been married for nine, for nine years. So it's not like, you know, a 50 year marriage or anything, but 
even over these past nine years, you know, the, the, the kind of the, the obstacles that we've had to tackle together, you know, the transparencies in our converse, you know, the transparency in our conversations, you know, not being afraid to say the things that we're feeling or that we're experiencing, you know, whether it be at work, whether it be, you know, at home, how, you know, there's times that Lucy just calls me or texts me and says, Hey, I'm just having a really rough day. Can you come home? So I just drop whatever I'm doing. And if I can, obviously, yeah, you know, I'll drop what yeah. I'm doing and, you know, just come home. And, um, you know, I mean, we've had moments in our lives where I had to just, I was, I, it was like, you know, 20 hour days for me because, you know, I would have to, you know, go to work, put in my eight to 10 hours or whatever, you know, come home and then just be caretaker that whole day. Cause Lucy was just, you know, um, health wise just wasn't maybe, you know, in the best, you know, best of health. Um, you know, we had issues with even our third pregnancy, you know, with her third pregnancy and, you know, so there was a lot that I had to carry, but that was a part of us saying we're not quitting on each other. Yeah. And I think that that's important to recognize because it not just carries out in, even in our marriage, um, and in parenting, but we're also special needs parents. Yeah. So that's been, that's been hard. Yeah. And so to try to navigate that as not a team, like, I just don't know how people, I don't know how people could do it. Yeah. And in fact, I would say people don't do it. You either do it as a team or you're, or, or you're really struggling. Right. There's just no way yeah. um, that you can do it by yourself. And so I think that had we not started learning those lessons and started valuing how important it was for us to work as a team, I, I honestly don't think that we would be able to handle um, some of the obstacles that come with being a special needs parent yeah. as well as we have. Obviously, it hasn't all been perfect, but I mean, I, you know, we've done you know, we've, we're doing it. We're, right. we're making it right. through. Right. Um, and our son is evidence of that. You know, he's, he's thriving. Yeah. And so had we not been able to come together as a team, I can't say that things would look the way they are with now this big, this new big thing, you right. know, does it make yeah, sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I, that's just a little bit about who we are. Uh, there's still a lot more to tell. So many things, so much more to tell. Um, so, you know, I'm 31, she's 29, she's getting ready to be 30 um, in November, so it's still a ways off. But, um, but, uh, but, you know, we still have a lot to say. We still have a lot to tell. Um, we may, you know, numerically seem young, but I consider myself to be a wise old man. Um, <laughs> we all have dreams and aspirations. <laughs> I officially became an old man when I fell asleep in my recliner and Ew, snored I know. watching watching the news. <laughs> Seriously, like he sat down in that recliner, and I swear he aged ten years immediately. It was it was gross, uh, but it was the best. But I I stuck it out. So that's right, even it. through it all, right, babe? Through right. it all. No, but um, there's still a lot more that we want to say that we want to talk about. Again, you know the, the our next our next episode you know, kind of be about what this show is going to be all about. Um, but, you know, we thought it important that you just kind of knew and found out a little bit about who we are. You're going to realize we are authentic. We are real. Um, one of the things that I absolutely despise is fakeness. I just, I, I just, I'm not a fan of fake people. Is fakeness an actual word? I don't know. I looked it up. I don't know if it is, but I just don't like fake um, so we're going to be authentic. Yeah. We're going to be real with you. Um, we're not going to pull any punches. We're going to say the things that need to be say uh, said. Um, Hopefully and, we can find the right words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be great and ideal. Um, but, uh, but, um, we're going to say the things that need to be said and, you know, we're going to, uh, so, so come back for our next episode. You know, we call it, take it from us because I mean, we're again, we call ourselves expert non-experts because we do, we have a lot of knowledge. We have a lot of things to say we've a lot of experience we've experienced yeah. a ton of life um and uh and so we think that that makes us experts in that area yeah, yeah. so um so thank you for tuning in um you know like i said this is this was just an intro we wanted you to find out who we were what we're all about um and so uh be sure to come back next next time for our next episode um as we kind of just roll through what this show is going to be about so i'm mingo i'm lucy and this was Take It From Us. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Take It From Us. 
please remember to subscribe and join us next time.